In this video, we're going to look at how we can make form validation much more simpler. So here in my browser, you can see that I'm getting this message, you are not logged in. So let's just go to forward slash login. I'll type in my dummy data. So John and my password is password, login, and there we go, we get you are logged in. So if I just go here and log out quickly, and go back to the login form, you'll see that we have this very standard form here. If we hit login without filling out any fields, we get our errors outputted up here. Now back in our controller, you can see that this is a huge method. There's lots of things going on here, and we can actually refactor all of this form validation into one line of code. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. So the first thing that we want to do is go to our Acme folder and we're going to create a new directory called form. Inside here, we're going to create a new file called form.php. We're going to add our namespace Acme form. We're going to say class form and this is also going to be abstract. And inside here, we're going to create a constructor and we're going to take some data and that's going to be an array and then we're just going to store that in the class so protected data okay so next thing that we want to do is create a validate method and as we're writing this method here not much of it is going to make sense to you but don't worry once we create our first form it will all just slot into place and make sense it'll just click so the first thing that we want to do inside of here is we want to check to see if a user or if the developer has specified some rules. So we want to say, if not is set this rules, then we're going to throw a new exception and that's going to say no rules have been specified. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a new validator. So we're going to say validator equals validator make. And we do need this little backslash here because validator is a facade in the global namespace. So validator make, the first thing that we do is pass in our data. So in this case, it's this. So this data, and then we need to pass in the rules, this rules. Now what we want to do is we want to check if this if this validator failed. So we're going to say if validator fails. And what do we want to do here? Well, we could redirect the user back, but that wouldn't be very practical but since we're in the form class. And that's really something that the controller should be doing. So instead, we're going to create a new exception. So inside of here, I'm going to call it form exception. And that's probably not the best name, but it will work. We're going to add our namespace. We're going to have class form exception, and that's going to extend the native PHP exception. And again, we need this global namespace here. We're going to have a constructor. And inside of our constructor, we're going to take some errors. And this is going to be a message bag. And the message bag is a class provided by Laravel. So we're going to type in this to message bag and we're going to take errors and we're going to set this errors to errors. And we're going to set that up here. And then we just want to create a very quick getter for that property. Now this isn't going to work just yet. We need to provide a namespace. So up here, we're going to say use illuminate support message bag and I think that's the correct path let's just check really quickly uh, Laravel framework illuminate support and there we go message bag is right there okay so let's get rid of all of that close this up we're done with this as well so inside here all we need to do is throw new form exception and we need to pass in the the validator errors and we do that with the validator messages method now if everything went well up to here and the validator didn't fail we just want to return true okay so now what we need to do 
is we need to create a new form inside here. We're going to call this login form. We're going to have, uh, first we need to specify the namespace, so Acme form. Then we're going to say uh, class login form extends form. And inside here we're going to create a property called rules and this is going to be an array containing our rules. Now if we go to the controller, you'll see that these are our rules here. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. And then we're done. We can just close that class there. The next thing that we need to do is inject that login form into our controller. So we're going to do that up here through the constructor. We're going to take login form and we're going to type in that. And we also need to set the namespace up here. So use Acme form login form. We're going to set that to a property. So this login form equals login form. And, and in large applications, you're probably going to have a lot of things like this. You're going to have forms and repositories and it won't just be for login. It will be for sign up and edit profile and all that kind of stuff. So you may want to turn this into a service. We're not going to be covering that in this video, but do read up on that if you're interested. So back to this, we're going to set our property up there. And now what we can do is we can get rid of all of this. We can say try this login form validate. And then we can catch the exception. It was called form exception. And up here we need to set that the, the namespace. So form exception. And all we're going to do here is return redirect back with input with errors e get errors. And that's the method in our form exception that we created here. Okay, so let's test this out back to our browser. I'm going to hit refresh. Okay, so I just spent a couple of minutes debugging this code and I realized that I made a huge mistake. So we need to get rid of this constructor here. And we're going to instead pass the data into our validate method. So we want to take array data. And we're going to replace this down here with data. Hit refresh and there we go, we get our form. So let's hit submit without, uh, without inputting anything. And there we go, we get our errors. Now I did say that we were going to refactor this into one line. So let's do that. Let's go to global.php. And down here, you'll see app error. And this is how Laravel handles its errors. It uses a kind of observer pattern to detect when a uh, exception is thrown and then it calls log error. And we can actually add our own handlers down here. So we're going to say app error function and we're going to pass in our class. So it was Acme form, form exception. So Acme form, form exception. And the type hinting is vital here. If we don't provide the full path to the class, then Laravel won't know what type of exception we're looking for. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to paste it in there. So now what we can do is we can get rid of this try catch block like so hit refresh and hopefully this will work. Okay. I forgot to fix this. Let's try one more time. And there we go. Everything works perfectly. So now whenever we want to create a form, we just create a new class, name it, add the namespace, Acme form, class signup form extends form. And then we pass in our data, sorry, our rules. And we'll just leave that blank. And inside our method, all we have to do is say this sign up form validate, and then we pass in our input. And of course, this will be injected via the constructor. And that will handle everything that will if there's any errors that will redirect the user back with its old form data. 
and any errors.